Hello there. I'm Scotty. You're not. Welcome back to Short Lived. We are talking about Bob Patterson and my journey to watch all of them. The shows that are contained within the Seinfeld curse. So Bob Patterson came out in 2001. Star Jason Alexander as a motivational speaker named Bob Patterson. Uh, it only lasted five episodes before it was canned. There was ten episodes that were that were filmed, but they didn't air. And it's really weird because I watched all five episodes. And then in this playlist, there's a clip of an act from an, and the actress that was in the in this episode it was a clip of her. And Jason Alexander in a scene from the show, but it wasn't from any of the five episodes that I watched. So it's interesting to know, I want to know where that came from. As the other five episodes didn't air as far as I know, unless they aired them in CTV, I don't know. But, yes, it's a traditional sitcom format. And Bob Patterson is a motivational speaker, number three in the world. He's got this partner named Landell, played wonderfully by Robert Klein. Uh, and he has his, uh, secretary who's in a wheelchair, played by Chandra Wilson. Chandra Grimes. Chandra Grimes? Whatever her name is. She's from, I don't know. Chandra Grimes. Whatever. The, the Grey's Anatomy lady. And, uh, and she's funny, uh, but I did notice, like, in the first episode, there were a few more characters. And then, like, there was another female co-worker, and then there was, a, like, an assistant intern guy. And after that, they got rid of them and replaced them with, uh, all of a sudden, uh, Bob has a son who has come, his explanation of why he was gone for this episode was that he was in Brooklyn visiting his mother. The sun is one of the worst parts, although there are sometimes in the episode uh, Naked Bob, uh, he he was kind of funny because you got boobs. What? Uh, uh, he's just come off, you know, he's been divorced for eight months from his ex-wife Janet, and he's trying to move on. But then Janet shows up, and she says she's celibate, so she doesn't want to get back together with him, but she wants to be friends, and they end up living together. I guess, and then the sun comes in. So I'm, I, I, I want to know, like, how many rooms does he have? We never see more than downstairs and the upstairs, so we don't really see. You know, it's more like a loft too, because you go upstairs, it's like a balcony. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Um, there's a, there's like a couple of episodes where John Tesh shows up, playing himself, and even his wife Connie Selica. From the greatest American hero, shows up in an episode. There's an episode where he tries to wrangle Bo Derek to be his co-star in one of the videos. And they have sort of a romantic relationship, which she, I thought she was married at the time. I don't know. Uh, but that, that goes south. And Connie Selica ends up being the one to co-star with him in the video. And we don't see her or John Tesh again after that episode. Uh, which is good because I didn't really care. The John Tesh stuff, like the, the way that they got him to quit was funny as hell. Like he keeps, he keeps telling Bob, "Okay, what you gonna do? You just keep nodding." Okay, he nods. He's like, "Bob, what are you doing?" And I'll say something. He goes to say something. Pulls him to the side, and then they do it over again. And eventually, John Tesh has enough because you know what? I don't have no this. I'm not dealing with it anymore. I quit. But he gets found out, you know. And like I said, he had this other assistant in the pilot, that's replaced by Vic. It was a little bit funny, but he reminds me of Joe Rogan's character from News Radio. So that's a little bit close, and they were on about the same time. So, I don't know. They're a little close to that. Uh, the episodes are fine. Like the pilot's just the pilot. He's trying to deal with the fact his ex-wife back. And the next one is the Connie Seneca one with Bo Derek. And then you have ones where one... There's Naked Bob, where he's trying to... Um, he's going to pose nude for this calendar this book or something and he's afraid because the woman in charge is french and every time he hears french he gets a boner and so he's afraid but like 
If you're doing a nude photo, wouldn't you want it to stand at attention? I'm just saying you wouldn't want to be dangling like. I don't know. I think you'd want to stand at attention for these things, right? Are you so worried about it that he gets this special tea from his wife, ex-wife, excuse me, that's supposed to stop that from happening? The problem is he takes the tea and then she hits on him. This French uh, photographer lady, whatever, hits on him. And because she doesn't get the boner, <laughs> she thinks he's gay. Because he says, oh boy, because, you know, the language barrier, oh, you like boys. And so then the funny joke, the end to all this is that there's a bunch of male, nude, nude male models in there. And now the stuff is worn off. She's speaking French again. And he's got a boner. So there's your punchline. Yeah, I didn't care for that episode. I saw where it was going right away. When I said, uh, and they being like, oh, him. He's gonna get a boner. So they're gonna think he's gay. It's gonna confirm that he's gay, but I don't know. It just didn't. That one wasn't funny. But then there's another one. It wasn't funny. Uh, he, he's in a rivalry with another motivational speaker who's number two, played by William Shatner. Uh, and they're up for these motivational speaker awards. And so they try to find a way to bribe these people into voting for him. Well, the first attempt doesn't work because he knocks the child's son, played by a 34-year-old small person. Like, I think he's supposed to be, like, a 30-something-year-old small person. I think he's supposed to be that, but he, I don't know. It comes out as weird. But that doesn't work, so Rob decides he's going to have sex with the other one, who's a female. But he can't do it because she's an old woman. It's uh, that Francis lady. She's been in a lot of things. She's uh, Happy Gilmore's grandmother. And she was in the in the mouth of madness. She's been a lot of things. When she rest in peace, obviously she's dead. And then she uh passed away. But um He doesn't do it and, and, and instead makes Robert Klein do it, and then they found out she wasn't the right person. It was actually her granddaughter, or her daughter, granddaughter, whatever, that was in charge of it. And because there's a whole scene where the small guy reads off the name and he thinks it's the wrong name because he Got it in a bag. The woman is supposed to vote for him. So he freaks out. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's reading out the wrong name. He's like, no, no, no. You know, I don't remember the name. William, William Shatner, I'll just say that. He's like, no, no, no. And he grabs the thing from the guy, causing the guy to fall down again. And he goes, now the real winner is William Shatner. So he, he still won, which, you know, he still lost, I mean. Because, yeah, not the right person. So, you know, that one wasn't funny. But then the next one, the last episode, is about um, Bob's personal bathroom. Uh, and at first I was a little annoyed by it. But the way they run, came around on it to show you how this happened. Because they keep mentioning how they met, how they became partners. And... They really get to show their acting, acting chops, anger, the sentimental, all that stuff. And, uh, because Bob has been having, letting the people use his personal bathroom while they renovated the staff bathrooms, bathroom for wheelchair accessible. And now they can go back to doing that. He doesn't like the fact that, uh, Landro is, uh, Landell, excuse me. Is using his bathroom. Also, this other one he doesn't make out about. But finally, he has enough that he tells him he can't use the bathroom. This causes them to fall out and have an argument. Then we get a flashback. It's just one of those things like, oh, we're doing this, we're doing this, where one person shows their point of view, which is heavily, you know, favorable towards them, and the other person tells their point of view, which is heavily favorable towards them. Which they're both amalgamations of what really happened, but yeah. In Landell's version, he's successful and he's the one that brings Bob up because Bob had no confidence. Uh, but in Bob's version, Bob is the successful one with a full head of hair, I might add. And Landell is the one that's drunk and out on his, on his own. 
And the one thing I got to criticize is that we don't actually get to see how they actually met. They never go back and say, well, no, I was there and it went down this way. And he gave the truth. Because sometimes in those kind of stories, there's one person that's like in the middle of everything that doesn't have a, you know, they do that and tell us the truth. You know, you see it before, like Victorious did something like that. Well, Victorious never showed the real one, but I'm just saying. Other shows, other episodes that of TV shows that do it better. Mm. We like to see what really happened, but we do get a scene where Bob shows after you know he says I'm done, I'm out of here. Uh, Bob shows up at this bar and Landell is there, and they talk, and they kind of reminisce, and you see how they came to you know deal with it and get the catchphrase uh, to the top, which Vic earlier messed up with T-shirts that said Tuna Top. And I do think when, when Landell says, uh, you know, it sounds too much like tuna top. And I'm like, eh, no, that doesn't work. Because earlier you were, Bob was surprised when the shirt said tuna top and didn't know what that meant. So, no, you cannot put a joke in at the end because you thought it was funny at the beginning. But it doesn't connect. You can't do that. Oh, no. This show was better than I thought it was going to be. Is it the worst of the of the four that I have to do? Uh, I don't know. Much like Michael Richards' show, I'd give it a C. Maybe a C minus, because it's not as good as Michael Richards' show. But I don't know. It was all right, you know. Uh, Jason Alexander is doing a good job. Unlike Michael Richards, he didn't have any problem putting some of George in there. And you can see it in some episodes, but it's kind of an amalgamation of George and other things. And I thought that it worked out pretty well for his performance. You can see George in there, but he's not as George as he could be if he was going full George. You know. But, I don't know. I think maybe this is one of those that, much like with the... With the Michael Richards show, needed more episodes. Michael Richards show had a good thing going. If it had about well, five more episodes, maybe a full 13 starter season of it, maybe you would have, you know, had something going. Here, if you had a for a full 13 for this, maybe. Maybe. I'm not gonna be able to say that about the next one, because that one actually got two seasons worth. 15 episodes in total, 10 season one. Five in season two, and that's watching Ellie, which will be the next one I go over. And oh boy, I don't know about that. I've heard some things. I've heard things. I've heard things. But right now, uh, what are your thoughts on the Bob Patterson? You know, comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.